Hello, it's Scott Manley here, once again in my dressing gown, which is the dressing gown of bad news, because I woke up to another Starship failure. Uh, this is a prototype that failed down at Boca Chica, Texas. It wasn't quite as spectacular as the other ones. Uh, previous ones have been sort of boom boom Boca Chica. This is much more deflating propellant tanks and presumably deflating egos and morale of everyone involved, which is really unfortunate. I think with the previous two tests or a few tests, they have demonstrated that they've got the welding and fabrication processes down. And I think this is a testing failure this time. So what happened was they had been doing the pressure testing. They'd been doing it with water or originally and having checked out, they then moved on to testing with liquid nitrogen. They tested the lower tank and that was working fine. The upper tank was at this point full of liquid nitrogen. The lower tank was pressurized to help support the load. But I think what happened was they probably lost pressure in that lower tank and without the extra support, the whole structure collapsed under the load. This is very similar to the way old Atlas rockets would collapse when the air pressure, the gas pressure was lost. They needed that pressure to support those balloon tanks that were so thin walled. Starship is very different because it is able to support its own weight. But when you fill up the forward propellant tank without filling up the rear propellant tank, that's a situation which is not something that would normally be encountered in the, the mission. So this is a testing thing. They needed to make sure it was pressurized. It didn't happen and something, it collapsed. Now, we're not clear. Is this somebody that made a mistake? Is there a, a failure in the ground service equipment? Did a valve stick open? You know, is there, yeah... It, there's a lot of different possibilities, but again, this is largely this kind of thing you expect when you're moving very, very quickly and breaking things. You move fast, break things. That's the sort of hacker mentality. Um, it's very much a maker mentality, I'd say, that that's really what this is about. If you look at, say, SLS, SLS is building tanks roughly the same size. When they started looking at fabricating these things, they spent a lot of time writing things down, you know, designing their process. It wasn't just that they were designing the tanks, but they were designing the fabrication process that was involved. Because you want to build, the, you don't want to just build the tanks, you actually have to build the machines to make building the tanks consistent. It was years uh, before the SLS started putting tank sections together because they had to build the jigs that would do the friction stir welding between the sections. And then, of course, once they did that, they had to test that it was all right. And they were building tanks. And then two years into that, in 2017, they were like, oh, we need to change our head, the, the welding tool, because the tool isn't doing things properly. You know, friction stir welding, let's just talk about it because the last time we had a failure of Starship, we had uh, everybody saying, oh, you should use friction stir welding. Haven't you heard? It's the best thing since sliced bread. And of course, the reason for that was because there's a great video by Sparter Every Day where he tours a ULA factory with Tori Bruno. And they show the process, obviously heavily redacted, where they are doing friction stir welding on these tank sections. And what, what you do, right, is instead of fusion welding, where you heat up the material and create a pool of liquid which hardens, you are, it's a solid state process where you're essentially pushing hard on the tank, on the tube section to be joined with a rotating tool head and the friction kind of plasticizes the material and twists it together to create a very nice weld that uses less energy overall and produces cleaner welds, less oxidation. But um, it works very well with aluminium and in fact, you know, ULA use it on the Atlas, SLS uses it on, well, they use it for the SLS, and SpaceX use it for the Falcon 9. It, it's not so good for stainless steel. Although it has been shown to work, they haven't scaled up, they haven't got the hardware to do this for Starship at this point. They're still using, I believe, TIG welding, maybe? Uh, I'm not an expert on welding. In fact, I looked at a job posting, just out of curiosity, for Boca Chica, and they listed types of welding I'd never heard of and I'm very fascinated by. So yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do like friction stir welding, as I understand it, you need to have a tool head which is harder than the material. Stainless steel is a lot harder than aluminium. So your tool head is harder, it becomes more brittle. 
it's not a process that is they're totally comfortable with. So they're still using people and people are adaptable. Once they have figured out how to fabricate Starship, they will start building out giant rigs that will do these same processes. These big circumferential welds around the tank sections, they will become automated once they are sure how they want to do it. And then it'll be less people with welding hardware and more machines doing a specific job repeatedly. But having people means it's very adaptable because that rig will only do the one thing and people are very adaptable and they can change things out. So yes, um, going forth, I see that SN4 is already well into construction and it will probably be ready in a month or so, unless of course, you know, the current global health crisis causes some problem and stops that. It is, as I said, very unfortunate. It looks like they have solved many of the fabrication processes and they've just encountered another unrelated problem and it set them back, but I believe all these problems are solvable. And I do hope that we get to see this thing fly at some point. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Mm -hmm.